From popular crime dramas like CSI to real-life investigations, fingerprints have long been the gold standard for solving crime. But one of the biggest challenges in forensic science is linking prints from different fingers to the same person, leading countless investigations to hit a wall. Now, a group of Columbia students is challenging the consensus that every fingerprint is unique. In the past, if you had a fingerprint from, let's say, my right thumb, and you wanted to match it to a sample of my left pinky, you would be unable to do that. The technology did not exist to match them. People thought there was absolutely no correlation, unable to match, and unfortunately, this led to a lot of crime cases being unsolved. We have two different fingerprints at two different crime scenes. Previously, it would be impossible to match them together. Um, but using our technology, you can now match them to the same person. The idea for this research started with a conversation that Gabe Gao had with a professor during the pandemic. My freshman year of college, I was actually stranded home back in Buffalo. And I was sad at the time, but the silver lining was I got to keep in touch with this wonderful professor, Kwon Yashu. And at the end of our chat, he uh, you know, just posed, like, Gabe, do you really think that all fingerprints are really unique? I was like, what do you mean? And he says, well, particularly those fingerprints on the same person, they share common genetic material. Surely there must be some sort of similarity. Right? And little did I know that one offhand comment would like literally take over the next three years of my life. Over the past three years, Gabe and his team have built a finger matching system that can link fingerprints from different fingers to the same person. So here in the bottom left corner, we have our given fingerprint. So that's like when you're investigating the crime scene, this is the fingerprint you already know. Whereas the two fingerprints at the top, another fingerprint from the same person and a fingerprint from a different person. And it wants to tell which one of these matches the fingerprint we already know. Yeah, so it's actually focusing on this region called the singularity. And that's a really cool name, but what it actually just means is the swirl, the loop near the center of the fingerprint. So previously, fingerprint analysts would use something called the minutiae. And the minutiae were these breaks and bifurcations in fingerprints, and uh, people would just uh, mark them by the location and the direction. As you can see here, when you base the matching on the minutiae, the model actually gets a prediction wrong. So we dug a little bit deeper into this and we thought, okay, so these traditional features are failing us. What features are actually important? And we found out that when you stripped all color, all thickness, and only left the ridge orientation, the angles in the image, our model was able to get it right with basically the same accuracy. The team has gained international attention in the media and from the scientific community since publishing the results, but it will take further research and experimentation before the technology reaches local police departments and changes the way crimes are solved on the ground. The main bottleneck is that we only had 60,000 samples of training on, and that seems like a lot. Like, you try counting to 60,000, right? That's a long time. But in the world of AI, that's actually a small potato, right? Most AI systems that are in production use you know, millions and millions of samples. There are also, of course, the ethical questions. There definitely are ethical concerns that we need to be, you know, be aware of, but I think stopping just saying we're not going to try is kind of a, a cop-out. Now we're at a stage where AI is not just regurgitating information, it's coming up with new things. And furthermore, like literally about our fingerprints, right? My ancestors, your ancestors, Anise's ancestors, Judas' ancestors, all been looking at their fingerprints for hundreds and hundreds of years, and yet no one ever saw that similarity until our AI pointed it out. So we now have AI that knows our own bodies better than we do. And if that doesn't blow your mind, <laughs> I don't know what will. <laughs>